स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so the theorem is as follows so the theorem is theorem number 6 or the theorem of the lagrange lagrange multiplier rule lagrange multiplier rule so let let omega a subset of rn be a region subset of rn be a region and and let f from omega to r or g from omega to r be smooth functions be smooth functions and if i have that f has a, a local extrema f has a local extrema at x bar in omega the local extrema the vector we are talking about a uh, lagrange multiplier in multiple dimensions so before that i must have said that that lagrange multiplier method is certainly valid for higher dimensions so can be can be extended to higher dimensions okay so we are talking about the case in n dimensions here so suppose the local extrema is x bar subject to the constraint subject to the constraint g of x is equal to 0 and such that such that the gradient of g at x bar does not vanish then then there exists a lambda such that the gradient of f minus lambda g is equal to 0 right and this rule is true for rn where n is any integer okay so then how about the scenario when we have multiple constraint more than one constraint it turns out that lagrange multiplier works there as well so let me highlight with Uh, with an example so in the case of multiple constraints in the case of multiple constraints constraints uh, we are going to extremize we are going to extremize f from omega which is a subset of rn to r omega which is a subset of rn to r subject to subject to m which is typically less than n or the dimension of the space m constraints okay so then i have that gk of x bar so i have constraints like of the form gk of x bar equal to 0 where k is from 1 to m there are m constraints right so the necessary condition in this case the necessary condition given by lagrange reduces to the following it tells us that grad of f of x is equal to the summation of the lambdas times grad of g of x where k is from 1 to m right so let me let me call this condition as star and further 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 we need to generalize the condition we need to generalize the condition that the grad of g is non zero as follows 
to look at the fact now we are talking about problem having multiple constraints and it could be a problem in R n right. So, let us say the general situation is where x is a vector right. So, we have multiple constraint in multiple dimensions. So, to generalize this condition that grad g is not 0 let us consider the following matrix right. So, consider consider this matrix m of x bar which is grad g 1 of x bar grad g 2 and grad g n so on so forth right. So, this is m ok. So, expanding further this is nothing but the matrix del g del x 1 and so on del g del x n del well this is g 1 del g m del x 1 to del g m del x n right. So, now we have an m by n matrix m by n matrix now also known as the augmented well also known as the Jacobian matrix the Jacobian matrix right. So, students who have done a bit of multivariate calculus can immediately tell me that generalizing the condition grad g not 0 would lead to the fact that the Jacobian will be such that the determinant is non 0 right. Not only that we need something more right. So, so first of all let us say so, so let us say now so, to, to generalize the condition that grad g is not 0 this is equivalent to saying this is equivalent to saying. So, the generalized version right in this in this particular case of multiple constraint it is equivalent to saying that the rank the rank of m of x must be at least 1 right which means at least one component of grad g is non 0 right. So, there is at least one non zero row of this Jacobian matrix ok. So, then further further since I have that grad f is summation lambda k grad g. So, that is via the Lagrange multiplier method it also tells me that grad f is linearly dependent dependent on on the family grad g k right k from 1 to m right. It is linearly dependent on this set of vectors which means which means that look at this augmented matrix. So, the augmented matrix look at this augmented matrix I denote it by m f of x bar which is also equal to the all the top rows are given by the Jacobian matrix the last row is given by grad f. Now, what can be can we say for this augmented matrix is that since the last row is linearly dependent on all the above rows which means that the rank the rank here of m f will be bounded above by the rank of by the rank of m right rank of m f is bounded above by the rank of m because the last row is linearly dependent ok. So, we are ready to state uh, the result for Lagrange multiplier with multiple constraint. So, let me state it in the form of a theorem number 7. So, let let omega be a subset of r n and f is a function from omega to r n omega to r and I have the constraints g k g k is r set of functions from omega to r be smooth be smooth functions be smooth functions for k equal to 1 to m and if f has a local extrema 
f has a local extrema at x bar which belongs to omega subject to the m constraints subject to the m constraints m constraints which are given by g k equal to 0 then then what I have is so let me call this as double star right and the condition double star is satisfied the condition double star is satisfied then what I am going to get is let us say it is satisfied at x bar then there exists a lambda i such that such that grad of f minus summation there are lambda i's such that grad of f minus summation lambda i's grad of g i's is equal to 0 right. So, that is what we have that is what we have uh, seen so far and that has now been compiled in the form of a theorem. Okay, so, let us look at this situation of multiple constraint with an example. Okay. So, find the local extrema, find the local extrema of f of x bar which is x 3 square by 2 minus x 1 x 2 subject to subject to g of well I we have two constraints. So, g 1 of x is x square x 1 square plus x 2 minus 1 equal to 0 and my second constraint is g 2 of x bar is x 1 plus x 3 minus 1 is equal to 0. So, find the local extrema of this subject to this these two conditions. Now, from now from so, how are we going to approach this equation? We will just use our Lagrange multiplier constraints to begin with. So, I have defined my Lagrange multiplier constraint as as star here is the condition right. So, let me call this as star. So, from star I see that I can directly find. So, here I have that n the total number of variables are 3. So, n is 3 and the number of conditions m is 2. So, then the equations that I get from the Lagrange multiplier methods will be will be 3 in total from the gradient condition and we have 2 we have 2 constraints. So, here are so I am directly writing my conditions coming out from star. So, these are my 3 relations which can be checked very easily right. So, I get the second one is x 1 plus lambda 1 this is equal to 0 and the third one is x 3 minus lambda 2 which is equal to 0 and students can see that there are 3 variables x 1, x 2, x 3 and 2 constants also are known lambda 1 and lambda 2. So, these are my 3 equations and subject to subject to the condition g 1 is equal to g 2 is equal to 0, I will immediately be able to solve the system. It gives me 2 points, the first point uh, I am directly writing the answer, the students are asked to check that this is indeed the solution right. The first point is this quantity and the second point is this quantity 2 by 3, 5 by 9, 1 by 3. So, these are my solutions right. Okay. So, then given I, I get my lambda 1 to be negative 2 by 3 and lambda 2 to be 1 by 3 right. So, so for omega so, let us now check let us now check uh, about the uniqueness of the solution that we have got or uh, so let us see what happens to the rank of 
the Jacobian matrix and the augmented matrix for these two solutions. Now, for omega, if we calculate the Jacobian matrix m of omega, you see that it comes out to be the following 2 cross 3 matrix minus 2 1 0 1 0 1. It is easy to check because all I have to do is to find the necessary derivatives of this conditions of this constraints. Right? So, this is nothing but del g 1 del x 1 del g 1 del x 2 del g 1 del x 3 del g 1 sorry del g 2 del x 1 del g 2 del x 3 del x 2 and del g 2 del x 3 right evaluated at minus 1 evaluated at the point w right. Now, similarly, if we check the augmented matrix, the augmented matrix is comes out to be minus 2, 1, 0, the first two rows are the same and the last row is 0, 1, 2. Notice that in this case, row 3 is nothing but row 1 plus 2 times row 2, right. So, the last row is linearly dependent as expected or the rank of the augmented matrix is less than or in this case exactly equal to the rank of the Jacobian matrix. Okay. So, what I get is, so this condition is certainly, certainly true which guarantees that grad G is non-zero. Right? So, through this we are guaranteeing that we are not dealing with pathetic cases. Similarly, we can check. So, similarly, similarly check the students are asked to check that this rank let well. So, let me call this as my condition A. So, A holds for the other solution that we had z bar right. Okay. So, which means that w and z both are extremas or local extremas that are found using Lagrange multiplier. So, it seems that Lagrange multiplier is the way to go. It presents a very rosy picture and allows us to solve almost all different class of problems. But now next I am going to show another class of problems where the Lagrange multiplier creates some problems or completely fails. So, those class of problems are going to be denoted by abnormal problems, abnormal problems. Now, what are these class of problems? Of course, we have seen that throughout our lecture discourse, we have assumed this following constraint, right. This is, this is what we have assumed so far, right. How about when this is not true? That is the grad G, the constraint, the gradient of the constraint is 0 and then we will deal, we will see that we run into some troubles. Okay, so, so, the Lagrange, it turns out that the Lagrange method breaks down, breaks down when g, grad g is 0, right and we will see how or this is equivalent to saying that the rank, the rank of the augmented matrix not necessarily less than equal to the rank of the full matrix or the Jacobian matrix. Right? So, when this, this inequality is not satisfied, we will run into trouble. Right? So, so, which means we have two class of problems. So, the first class of problem is that we have this Lagrange setup, this is equal to 0 and we have that grad G is non-zero. So, those are the class of problems very easily solved by Lagrange multiplier. We call them as normal problems. Right? And we could have another class of problems where again the Lagrange uh, setup gives uh, some equations, but grad G vanishes, right? And those are the class of problems we call as abnormal problems. That is, the points that we find from set Lagrange setup does not satisfy the gradient criteria. Okay. Now. It turns out that, so what is so difficult or what is the difficulty about 
gradient uh, vanishing. It turns out that gradient vanishing even if gradient vanishes, gradient of the constraint vanishes, we may still be able to find the solution, but we run into trouble like the derivative of the, the derivative vanishes or the derivative does not exist of the objective function and similar such problems, right. So, grad g 0 may lead to problems of the sort that the solution set, the solution set to g equal to 0, 0 need not, need not form smooth, need not form smooth curves solution to 0 need not form smooth curves and the second is that the curves may have corners or cusps. The curves may have may have corners or cusps right. So, the solution set g equal to 0 need not form smooth curves and the curves may have corners or cusps and our next set of few examples are going to exactly show these difficulties. Okay? So, let me show this class of problems, the problems that we face via some examples here. So, here is one quick example. So, I have my objective function f is x square plus y square and my constraint function g is y minus 1 whole cube minus x square. I would extremize the problem is extremize, extremize f subject to g, extremize f subject to g. When we do that, again we start solving by setting up the Lagrange constraint. We take the gradient of f minus lambda g equal to 0 and we are going to get set of two equations. The first equation is x. 1 plus lambda equal to 0 and the second equation is 2 y minus 3 lambda y minus 1 square is equal to 0. Right? Now, to we have three unknowns x, y and lambda and of course, we have the constant g. It seems everything is nice, but notice the first equation. So, let me call this as 1 and this as 2. So, from 1 if I set x equal to 0, and I use I use g equal to 0, I get y equal to 1 as my solution. However, from 2 which is independent of x, when I plug y equal to 0 sorry y equal to 1, we have no solution right. y equal to 1 does not well y equal to 1 does not uh, equate uh, does not provide us any solution right and further now well which means that we should perhaps explore the other condition lambda equal to minus 1. So, if I take lambda equal to minus 1 right then from condition 2 from condition 2 I get that I get the following equation 3 y square minus 4 y plus 3 is equal to 0 it turns out that there is no real solution to this problem right so we are stuck it seems that there is no extrema and uh, the lagrange method completely breaks down now but something still can be done notice that notice the following notice that the only solution that we found although it did not satisfy the constraint the only solution perhaps the only solution that we found was 0 1 perhaps I should definitely write the word perhaps uh, because we have shown that we have shown that it does not does not there is some problem here right. So, perhaps the only solution the only promise that we were getting was at point 0 1 right. So, notice that at this point if we were to evaluate the grad of g right we will see that when we plug y equal to 1 and x equal to 0 i am going to get grad of well of course we take the gradient we will still get at this point this is equal to 0 so the so gradient of g vanishes so this is certainly an abnormal problem so 
uh, so the idea here is uh, that the abnormal problem will not cannot be approached via the Lagrange multiplier method. Now, geometrically let us see what is the problem happening, what is so problematic about this, this example. Now, if we were to look at the level curves of f, let us say the level curves of f which will be f equal to a constant, I know that these are circles right. So, x square plus y square is equal to c are circles which are having its center at the origin right. And if I were to plot, so this is my level curves f is equal to c. And if I plot my g equal to 0, my g equal to 0 we will see that it looks as if it is the following right. So, at x equal to 0, so this point is 0 comma 1. So, at x equal to 0, we see that it forms a cusp point right. So, the derivative, the derivative vanishes, the derivative vanishes as has been readily shown here right. So, which means, which means that this sort of a method where we are taking the derivative of the net of the function will not hold because the derivative vanishes for the condition for the constraint right. So, that is why the Lagrange multiplier fails because we are assuming that the derivative the derivative is available for us right. Uh, well, it is not vanishes, but the derivative the derivative does not exist does not exists right. So, we will have we will have a problem at this point ok. So, then let us look at another example. Now, I am going to take my objective function f to be x square plus y square and I take my function g the constraint to be x square minus y square right. So, in this case in this case we, we see that if I set up if I set up my Lagrange condition f minus lambda g equal to 0, I am going to again get a set of two equations. Let me quickly write them down x minus lambda is 0 and the other equation is y 1 plus lambda is equal to 0 and we see that let me call this as a and by b and we see that certainly x equal to 0 y equal to 0 satisfies, satisfies the condition. So, if I choose x equal to 0, then I get the solution y equal to 0 from, from g the condition g equal to 0 right. And if I choose lambda equal to 1, if I choose lambda equal to 1 or x not equal to 0, then I still get y is equal to 0, but y equal to 0 gives me x equal to 0 right. So, this is not possible, this is this this setup is not possible which means that which means that the only solution that we get the only solution that we get is 0 0 and lambda lambda is arbitrary right. Any value of lambda will satisfy for this point 0 0. Now, it turns out that further notice the objective function. The objective function is a real valued function with square of its variable and it is easy to see that the minimum of the function will be obtained at x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. So, the point that we got is minimizing the objective function right. So, so what is happening here? So, it turns out that that 0 0 is the global is the global minima of f because f is greater than equal to 0 and f is equal to 0 at 0 0 right. So, it is a global minima and uh, let us let us do the same exercise try to draw f and g. So, so g is the constraint which is this. So, if I were to draw this level curves notice the level curves of f are again this following function. So, if I were to draw these level curves, we see that the level curves are as follows and 
if I were to solve this constraint g, I see that the constraint is y is equal to plus minus x, right. So, these are pairs of two straight lines which are passing through the origin, which means that the only level curve that satisfies g will be the point at the origin, right. <coughs> okay. So, what I have is, so, so what, what I have just now showed is the following. So, f 0 0 is the global minimum of f and this and this critical point 0 0, this critical point 0 0 will be the same for any constraint which passes through 0 0 will be the same for any constraint constraint g equal to 0 which passes through the origin right. So, as I do not care about what the constraint is here. In fact, constraint plays almost minimal role as long as the constraint passes through the origin, it, it is quite clear that the, the critical point 0, 0, 0, 0 will be an extremal to this constraint optimization. So, in this case, the constraint is playing, the constraint is playing a passive role or this is a case of a passive constraint problem, constraint. Okay. So, the constraint plays a lower role than the objective function. 